I usually am not a very good keynote speaker. In fact, when Gorahan said I should be the keynote speaker, the first thing I asked him is, why me? Because I don't like keynote speeches. And he now said something that was quite interesting. We, we got into an exchange to try to establish what exactly are we talking about in DevFest and what kind of keynote are we going to have. You know, we old people, we have to figure out, we read the manuals. The young ones, they just look at it and they know what it is. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't take your permission before lifting our conversation. But there's no offense meant. Uh, so he gave me a long story, actually, about what is the goal of DevFest 2019. He said it's about stepping up. He wanted to reinforce thoughts and ideas that to make the developers in this room grow into people who build, who are amazing professionals. I'm sure everybody agreed with that. And then, and so this was my answer. There is a tall order for what he's asking for because I am not a motivational speaker by any stretch of the imagination. I am an engineer that stumbled into management and managed to, to run a large company and then retire and try and start new things. So forgive me if I'm not very inspirational because I'm not, I'm not a motivational speaker. <laughs> but then, uh, Benjamin Dada did send out a note. I don't know how many of you subscribe to his um, newsletter. But he sent a message out about DevFest that tried to crystallize what the expectation really was. Benjamin Dada sent out a teaser for this conference where he said that DevFest is about becoming amazing professionals. 10 times professional, 10x. Who is familiar with the 10x debate that, um, that's been going on? that the very good developer is 10 times the quality or whatever of the not so good developer. So I decided to make this very short keynote about getting to 10x. So the thing about looking at 10x is that it very easily degenerates into a rat race. And a rat race is very interesting because the rat that wins still remains a rat. <laughs> and, and it is very interesting because why I say aiming for 10x becomes a rat race is that technology is an unending development. Those of us that were 10x in our generation I'm sure we are not 10x in this generation. So you is a nev you're something that you never win because it's continuously evolving. And even when you start thinking of a developer and how you rate the quality of a developer, there are all kinds of things that start coming into consideration. And at a point, you realize that being a developer is like being an artist. And the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If you ever go to a, an art exhibition, you stand in front of one and you say, oh, this is this, this is that. Or you do like my son once said, who is this man that failed his art course? He just platters paint on the, doesn't he know how to draw? Meanwhile, that painting is worth XX millions. So developing software, especially, there's an art part of it. And that art part of it is what has made measuring developer productivity or developer quality not an easy thing to do. Because what are you going to measure it by? Is it by how efficient it is? Is it by how productive? How do you even measure productivity? 
if you, li if you write 100 lines per day and I write 10 lines per day, does that mean you are more productive than me? How do you measure the quality? You know, the Boeing aircraft and the problem with the software that caused it to crash. Probably the person who read that, led that development is a 10x developer. Don't think it's impossible. The Ariane aircraft, uh, Ariane spacecraft, crashed and burned just because somebody forgot to change the measurement from imperial units to the metric unit. And that's all. I can tell you the developers working on aircraft avionics are definitely in the 10x range. So in the end, if you ask me, and if you are talking about being 10x, about doing whatever it is that you want to do, you know what I will advise you. As far as 10x is concerned, just forget it. Why I say just forget it? Is that it depends on your context, it depends on what you're going to do, it depends on so many things that worrying about whether you are 10x or 1x or 5x or half x is immaterial. In my own personal dealings with developers, I've realized that in truth, everyone is competent. Everyone, even in this room, we are all competent. And the differentiating things are what I'll try to go over. Number one differentiating thing is curiosity. How many of you here will say you are curious? And uh, only very few. That's terrible then. Okay, that's a lot more. Okay. Now, if you are curious, let me ask you, how many of you that are curious have looked at the Android source code? Yeah, yeah, if you are curious, you know, you just want to know how the, I, I'm not saying go and write a new one, but at least see it. Yeah. And if you have been doing TensorFlow, how many of you have looked at the TensorFlow source code? Uh, there's one guy there and the other one there. Ah, and this one there. Because these are all open source anyway, so you can, they are free, you can, have, you can have a look. So you have to be curious about life, you have to be curious about techniques, you have to be curious about programs, you have to be curious about lots of things. It is, this is not the curiosity that kills the cat. This is the curiosity that makes the cat a lot much more smarter. Because when you are doing your development, there are things that come from different things you have experienced or learned or thought about that comes together for you to really create exceptional software. As Steve Jobs used to say, you connect the dots backwards. And he was giving the example. He went and led calligraphy in school, one of the courses he took come forward and that calligraphy becomes a major differentiating point for Apple systems in general. And to tell you some of the things I've been crazily curious about of recent, I asked the question, why are our roads bad? You know, before I even talk about Lagos roads, Honorable Commissioner. Why? are our roads bad? And you'll think that this question has nothing to do with software, right? You think it has nothing to do with software. Then I started finding out, asking questions, posting on, on Twitter, and people giving me replies. And the first thing that you find out is that your roads are bad because you don't build them well. That's the first thing. You don't build them well. And when you say you don't build them well, they are very interesting tidbits that I picked up. For instance, when they are laying the asphalt, there should be no sand on the road. After they've done the compaction, they lay the first one, there should be no sand. Why? Because if they have that sand, the next layer doesn't bind to the lower layer. And it is those pockets under those layers 
That is where water seeps into, and boom, you have potholes. And from potholes, the road is, is gone. I'm, see, I'm sure you are still wondering, how does this concern me as a software? So not to keep you for a long, the question becomes, assuming the roads are bad, how do we inform government that the roads are bad? It's not a trivial task, because if you are laying 3,000 kilometers of, of fiber, you, you know that you have more than 3,000 kilometers of roads in Lagos. And somebody has to know which section by meter by meter, which section is bad or going bad. Overseas, they have a system for monitoring the roads, where you have vehicles that drive over the roads, take measurements, and then report, report that back. And they're expensive equipment. So my curiosity led me to ask, why can't we do the same for Lagos State government. Why can't we find a way to report the state of the roads automatically? One quick answer, based on discussions I had with people, is wait a minute. If we all fitted our cars, or many cars, with vibration sensors, and they are driving on the roads, they can measure the vibration as it's happening and upload it, and then we have all the tens of flow tools and all the big data tools, and we can actually just create a map that immediately shows which parts of these roads are bad. It's doable. After all, Google is already telling me how many, where, are they, the tra where is the traffic in Lagos, right? So, honorable commissioner, I'll come back to you and say, okay, let's do this. But anybody here can do it. And that is why I say the first thing for you is to be curious. If you're not curious, really curious, you will just do what you normally do or what you are told to do. And what you're told to do, while it's fine, is a bit limiting. I've been in a corporate environment. So we'll tell you, build this inventory application. Do it in two weeks. Our, our thinking is that if you do it in two weeks, build the customer, we'll collect the money. I can tell you that you can build any number of inventory applications you like. It's not going to change your capacity as a developer or expand your, your thinking until you ask yourself, what exactly is an inventory system? So be curious, really curious. Languages, problems, don't limit yourself. The second thing I found very profound and very important, remember at the beginning I say that we are all competent. The differentiating things, I've talked about curiosity. The next one is attitude. I think this is probably the biggest thing. Why, why are you in this? Is it for the money? Is it for the passion? Is it for the fun? Why are you in this? Because in the end, it is your attitude that will determine how much effort you're going to put in and how you're going to deal with the inevitable uh, conditions when you fail and you have to stand up again. So in terms of attitude, you have to show up. You have to do it. You have to save the world by yourself. You have to show that passion. But the one I like most is that you need to have fun and you need to show off. I learned that when I was in the university. I had a friend, uh, Chijo Kanyang. We stayed in the same lab when we were doing our master's program. And we had our master's program, then we had all the fun things we were doing. So on this day, we rigged up a, a, a single sideband radio, and we could hear all the transmissions of the, mil of the Nigerian military. And then we realized that they were using frequency hopping. Then we just tuned our system, and our system was hopping along with their own. And we called, we are calling people in. Come on here. Come on here. They say, ha, ah, ah, we did it. We did it. You know, you show off the thing you have done. And it is important for us to realize that it is capacity above money. In reality, you, you, you can't show off the house you own. You didn't build it. You are showing off somebody else's work. You can't show, you can't show off your nice jacket. Somebody else made it. You know, like they say, 
who built the house? Is it the man that provided the money or is it the mason? Who goes home saying, I've done a wonderful job? You think it's the man who provided the money or is it the man who actually sat there and put one block after another? I think capacity above money is something that is very important. Yes, we are all promoting entrepreneurship. And I agree it is nice and important to promote entrepreneurship. But everything is not about money. And you have to actually bear that in mind. If you don't bear in mind that everything is not about money, you, you have a way, it has a way of derailing whatever activity you're going after. Sometimes solving a problem that will make life easier for all of us is enough motivation, whether you make money or not. And people have done that. Many of the supposed 10x have done more than that. As Steve Jobs says, stay hungry, stay foolish. You don't know it all, you will never know it all. You've not achieved it all, you will never achieve it all. These are some of my favorite people. They are a longer list, but I, th I thought I would talk about these three people because they relate to the attitude I'm talking about. Linus Torvalds wrote Linux for the fun of it. In fact, he wrote a book with that title. That is why he wrote a whole operating system, for the fun of it. And that is now being used why all around the world. Tim Berners-Lee wrote your browser, wrote the server, like Juliet also did. And we all use browsers, we all use HTTP servers. But he wrote both ends of it, plus the linking that happens between documents. Two things about these two guys, they never did it for the money. They gave it all away. No patents, nothing. But it is incredible what they were able to produce because they were not thinking about how much is it worth. Lady Adalovles is one of the interesting people for me, very, because she wrote programs for a computer that has yet to be built. Just, just think of it. The computer has not been built. It's just been designed. Nobody knows if it will work. And she wrote programs for it. And you know the interesting thing? When people finally managed to build a model of that computer, years after she was dead, guess what? Her programs ran on that computer, just as she intended it to run. The next thing is that you need to put in effort. Uh, and Eddie was talking about entitlement. There's nothing like entitlement as a developer. Nobody owes you anything. Google doesn't owe you anything. I had a very interesting experience earlier in my career. I was trying to set up some program on a Linux system, and it wasn't working. And I got tired, and I sent a mail to the man who wrote it, because it was open source. And the guy sent me a nice letter back and says, Dear James, as you can imagine, I am a nuclear scientist at CERN, and I am very busy with experiments. But you know why this open source thing is good? I don't have to fix your problems. The code is with you. Fix it and stop bothering me. <laughs> you know, initially I was like, what's the matter with this guy? So what if he's a nuclear? So what? Is he the only nuclear? Then it comes back to me that the thing is, I should make my own effort. The tools that are there are there for you to build. And why I asked whether anybody was curious enough to go under and see these things is that some days those things don't behave the way you think they should behave. Maybe it's a bug in the system. Maybe you be the person to find out that bug and point it out or even fix it. So when it comes to effort, we die, we die here. How many of you have had that experience? You know, when I was much younger, I've had this experience 
where the thing wasn't working. And I'm like, I'm not going home until this thing works. Then it's 9 o'clock in the night. Then it's 10 o'clock. Then it's 11. Then it's 12 midnight. And there were no phones. So my mom was worried because she didn't know where I was. Have I left office? Have I not left office? And we didn't have a phone in our house. So finally, I called my boss and said, please, can you find a way to send a message to my parents that I won't come home today because I'm working? Of course, they were not going to talk to me. They, they had no way of knowing what I was doing. They knew I was in the office. Actually, by 6 a.m., I said, yeah, I've done it. Yeah. And you could imagine, at 6 a.m., I was starting to feel like I've just started. I've been awake around the clock. So there's this, we die here. There's no entitlement. You fix the thing. No problems are left unsolved. But that also means you are willing. If you are willing, it comes almost naturally to you. So effort is very key. If you are not ready to make that effort, please don't ever think you are going to be even half X because you won't be anything. And because I've interviewed a lot of people, employed a lot of people, I've seen the difference between those who want to make effort. I have a guy, I think he, wants, he works with Team Apt now. Let me not call his name. I asked him to do something. We had a long argument. He said it was impossible. I said it was possible. Actually, what I told him to do was to get Lua to run on a POS. And he was like, this my guy has just gone crazy again. Why? What of all things? And then we agreed to a two-week deadline. And we left on a Friday. On Monday, he's the first person to show up in my office. And I'm like, so what now? You don't want to do it again? He said, no, no, I want to show you something. Lo and behold, he had Lua running on the POS. And I said, but you said two weeks. He said, okay, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't think. I said, ah, if this man said it's possible, ah, it, it can be done. And he spent the entire weekend, no sleep. But by Monday, he had Lua running on the POS. So it's a question of we die. I've forgotten the guy who wrote that book who says you put 10,000 hours for you to really become a master. Um, I don't know whether 10,000 hours works because if you work eight hours a day, five days a week, you need five and a half years. By the time you finish, Google will have released three, five new versions of their APIs. But the emphasis is that it is your effort in and applying that effort that is going to increase your capacity to be able to do, to build uh, software. Now, the last one is practice. When we say practice, is, they say practice makes perfect. But in this case, practice coupled with curiosity, coupled with attitude, makes you a lot more valuable. And it is important to practice. I mean, when, when as a corporate guy, I'll tell you, you are a back-end developer. And you should use Java. Typically, I expect you to just do that. Is it good for you? Probably not. Why I say probably not? What if Java no longer becomes the go-to language for building backend and you have skills for Java? Anyway, I know that there are people who have, I, I hear that people who have skills in COBOL are very much in demand now. Why are you laughing? It's true. If you can do COBOL now, you'll be paid top dollar. However, the key question I'll ask if you're doing, being a developer and you are looking at your practice is what have you built today? Five years ago, I'm still doing something about it 
till now. But the truth is that I am doing something about it. And, and at the right time, I will share it with people because it hurt me. I felt, you know, I, I, somebody will give you bad service. There's nobody to complain to. There's nothing you can do. You just have to live with it, and that's it. And that's common. But it expands. You don't even know who to complain to. So, if your car got spoiled in the pothole on the road, who do we complain to in Lagos State? I'm just, just asking. Maybe there's nobody, but I'm just... So, finally, I'll say, always be building something. And it's also possible that you can't think of what to build. If you can't think of what to build, please just come to us. Sorry, I'm just putting my small plug for my little startup in the backyard. In case you, you don't, can't think of anything to build, come, we'll give you so many things that are interesting to build. But no matter what, always ask yourself, what have you built today? Thank you very much. <laughs>